Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today, as you can see, we're starting off with my sketchbook, which usually I don't do if I'm drawing digitally. But the reason being is that I wanted to show you guys kind of the full process of how I tackle a more finished illustration. Now, I don't do this all the time because sometimes I do things willy-nilly and kind of just do things sporadically like I will sketch as I go or fix things as I go but if I have a certain theme or a concept idea that I want to do and I kind of want to execute it well I will try to flesh it out as much as I can before we actually start with the digital drawings so I decided that I wanted to do at least three to four thumbnails first so I usually do several small ones because this is how I was kind of taught we always had to do a minimum of three thumbnails before we could work on a rough draft so for the thumbnails, I kind of fleshed out how I wanted to frame Yunjin. By the way, we're drawing Yunjin today. Um, Yunjin is a upcoming character in Genshin and I absolutely adore her design. So I wanted to draw her kind of in a festival setting, like lantern, right? But we'll get into the concept a little bit later because I need to explain a few things um, that I use to... I don't know. It might be a cop-out, might not be. We'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I like doing sketches traditionally first just because it's easier for me to work faster and a little bit looser this way and I don't have the tendency to keep zooming in, adding detail and stuff. It's just, I don't know, for me it's a lot quicker and I didn't flesh this one uh, out as much as the, like, the one that I did for coaching because, I don't know, I decided to go a little bit quicker because I realize that I need to find a lot of references for what I need to draw so a lot of things are kept vague for now but I had a general idea of how to draw at least some of the structures and stuff. Now you can see I didn't really like the overall layout of the larger one so I decided to do one more thumbnail to see if I can fix the um, framing of it. So I wanted to have a little bit more of the food stall into the frame so we can kind of offset it but also give a little bit more setting to the overall composition and kind of like the concept itself and then we can put Yunjin less centered in the middle so we can put her kind of like off centered. Um, yeah I like to add little notes and stuff or you know just like general ideas of things so I threw in clouds, a moon for the background and I kind of wanted her to be placed in front of a food stall but it's also like the food stall is kind of like in front of the pier or like, you know, so that you could have the ocean and the sky visible because I wanted to work a little bit more on background anyways. So yeah, on to the digital aspect. So I decided to start up Clip Studio Paint and the reason being is that I needed to use the perspective tool if I was going to draw the food stall. My lines are very curved when working digitally. I don't, know, I don't know if it's because of the larger surface or just because I'm going fast and I'm not using my whole arm to draw the lines, but I needed to use it so I could put in the structure of the food stall first. And it was easier for me to imagine it if I kind of have at least one point perspective going. So yeah, that's what I have. I had the indication of kind of like little structures to put up more lanterns and where I wanted the horizon line to be so I could have the, the pier, the water, and then a bit of the sky. And having these all established will help me also put Yunjin into the whole composition. So like I said, I wanted her to be a little bit off-centered because I wanted her hair to sway to the side as if there's a little bit of a breeze. And I'm going to switch over to paint tool size sh like shortly because I sketch much faster in paint tool size. I'm just more used to the interface on there. So I wanted to work a little bit quicker. So I needed to switch things up. I do like using Clip Studio Paint if I'm kind of doing like experimentation or I'm taking my time so I can just like fully learn the program again. But for Paint Tool Sci, it's just much quicker, much simpler. And I've been using it for so many years that it's just more easier for me to work in. So here we go. Um, yeah, I am already feeling a lot more comfortable sketching in Paint Tool Sci. So you can see that I'm working a little bit more quickly and it was easier for me to block in shapes because of the specific marker brush that I'm using it's just easier for me to constantly like toggle the transparency so I'm erasing and putting back in lines much quicker um so I decided to look back at my sketchbook and see what notes that I had and one of the things is that I needed to tilt her head a little bit more because I wanted her to look I don't know look like she's kind of like peering through kind of 
dipping her head in, but I kind of threw that out of the window because I decided to change her pose a bit anyways. So I have a tendency to make the body look too small on like digitally because I zoom in too much. So I needed to redo her whole body, but I decided to change her hand positioning because if I wanted her hair to go towards the left side, I didn't really want her left hand to be up and obstructing um, other elements are flowing to that side. So I decided to put her hands in front of her kind of this like Like oh my gosh, like I'm pleased kind of I don't know pos like hand position um, But yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see that when I'm putting stuff in and the way how I have it kind of looks like she's greeting you maybe after her performance or something and you know, everything's kind of like clean, cleaned up and it's not as busy anymore and but she's coming like she came here to visit you in your food stall POV you're giving food to Yunjin um, yeah, is that weird? I don't know if that's weird but yeah, you can see that I expanded the background as well because I wanted to include a little bit of her waist and a little bit of indication of her dress but yeah, I had a lot of fun drawing her and I absolutely love, 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 love her design. She's very much like a character I love to draw a lot. So um, hopefully I'll draw her more in my sketchbook, but I had a lot of fun drawing her today and I think the end result looks really cute. Um, you're going to see that I'm mostly fleshing out her design first and then I'm going to have to go look up some references for the food stall, um, background elements, as well as the color palette because I'm going to be a little bit stuck on trying to balance some warm colors and kind of a more cooler tone sky. But I have some references that I already saved prior so once we get to the background section I will definitely show you guys but for now I'm just fleshing in Yoonjin and... Yeah, you know, that's basically it for now. So after putting Yunjin into a general space where I kind of established where I wanted to put her near the street cart, I needed to find some more references for kind of like the atmosphere and other elements such as like the lanterns and stuff. And as you can see, I'm kind of storing my images onto this program here and I'm constantly kind of like referring to this as I'm drawing. Um, so I decided to pull it onto my tablet screen to show you guys. So this is Eagle and Eagle is a desktop productivity tool that helps designers or artists easily find search and save various pictures or images or like reference materials into one place you can search them into tags where you can individually set like associated words or terms with each individual picture and then you can later then filter these pictures by the specific terms um, or you can just store them into folders and kind of further sort them into themes or categories of your choosing. Like here, I'm dragging certain um, pictures that I've been storing for Yunjin. So I'm kind of having this folder specifically for hers and kind of leaving this kind of like a mood board or inspiration board for me to reference. Saving pictures to Eagle is super quick and easy. You can simply drag and drop it into Eagle or you can just right click and click save to Eagle or basically my favorite way to do this and I kind of think it's like the most efficient way um, if you prefer doing things more quickly um, is to basically hold alt and just basically right click each image. You know when the image is saved to Eagle when you have this little notification on the bottom which is really nice. I personally really love how easy it is to store all my images on here and it's like perfect for anything that I need to do a little bit more planning so I can plan out maybe the atmosphere, I can do the, any kind of like background element, foreground element and all that. So you can definitely use it to help you plan illustrations, but you can also store all sorts of images such as drawings or photos that you see on Instagram or Twitter. And Eagle basically will keep the original source link right here and you can directly go back to wherever you got that image from. I know for me, I always feel guilty saving pictures of other artists' artwork so I tend to screenshot them because I want to be able to go back to see where did I get this image from so I can always go back and trace back to whoever the original artist was. Another thing that I find really cool about Eagle and it's one of my favorite things that I like to do when I'm maybe needing a little bit more inspiration is that you can sort your images and pictures by color. So 
in the color wheel or if you click on an image there's like these little swatches you can basically click them and eagle will filter out all the images that you have and find images that have the same color and it's an easy way for you to see how other artists incorporate that color into their drawings or you can see how that color interacts in other like pictures or drawings that other people have done or have taken so yeah i think it's a really cool way to um, view pictures a little bit differently if you're kind of stuck or into a kind of like art slump mood um, thank you again to eagle for sponsoring today's video and now back to the time lapse Okay, so now that I have some references already saved up, you can see that I'm already changing up stuff from the background. So one of the images that I have here, um, I'll show you guys screenshots of like what I have saved in Eagle, but there is like one that has more of a angled roofing and it has these little beams kind of sticking out. And because I wanted to have lanterns hanging there, maybe I thought that it would be better to hang it from that beam. So I needed to change that up. Um, the food carts and stuff or the food stalls, there was a lot of references that I saved, but I couldn't see like the actual food. And I haven't been to like, I don't know, like a night market, Asian night market in a while. So I'm not sure what they have anymore. Uh, so for the food, I decided to have three sections. So the ones that I wanted to include were jade parcels. I wanted to include um, mora meat. And then obviously the ones on the edge are just like, I think they're called like tong hulu, um, which is basically just um, candied fruit, if that makes sense. I think they're usually dates that they use or strawberries are very common too but yeah I've, I've eaten them when i was younger and i do like them i do find them a little too sweet now but yeah it's basically you pour um the sugar like kind of like a hot sugar mixture over top of fruit and then you let it solidify and it kind of gets to this cracked state where you when you bite into it, it has like a really hard shattering texture but then you have the nice sweet um fruity taste of a soft fruit in the inside so onto the coloring, um, I had a couple of references that I was looking at and I was kind of playing around with both. You can see that I started off with more of a greenish um, blue hue in the beginning and then I quickly switched to navy and purple. But then I tried to add back a little bit of the teal right now because of where the moon is. And I do have a reference of a moon. So I was trying to look at that. I didn't understand how to make the moon look like read as a moon. And for some reason in my brain, I didn't realize that I was planning to blur the background elements anyway. So there was not really a need for me to put this much amount of detail, but it was still nice to, to, to try out at least. Um, I decided to add in clouds. And I think it would have been easier if I added the clouds with a dark color and then added a lighter color. I think it would have looked um, a little bit better and more planned because this, I think the clouds look a little bit too white. I guess I do add a shadow, but still, I think, I don't know. They look a little bit too bright to me. Um, so I'm adding in a little bit more um, texture and kind of like the reflection of the moon into the water and you can see I did a brief indication of kind of like mountains or some kind of terrain in the back as well um, but yeah like I said I'm gonna be blurring some of this stuff anyways and because I forgot I'm gonna have to blur it in a weird way because I ended up merging a lot of my elements together um, but yeah, now I'm putting in colors for the stall. I have some stuff for kind of like the pier or the walkway behind Yunjin. Um, but so I, this is where I'm kind of like struggling with color. So it's kind of important for me to look at the references that I had. So I had ones of actual streets, um, kind of like during a night market or a festival. So they have like really bright lanterns, but I didn't lean them as red compared to those references because I was also looking at, um, I think one of the scenes in Lantern Right from last year was that it has more of a purple and orange theme. So I kind of lean things a little bit more to the orangey side so that we don't make this too... I don't know. I didn't want to get into weird colors or like clown colors. I don't want to make everything too vibrant, um, even though I do like vibrant colors. So yeah, you can see I had indication of the food coloring and hopefully I'll flush them out a little bit better. Just playing around with a little bit of shadows and I could already tell that for the food stall, stall like itself as well as the lanterns there's a lot for me to fix um 
So yeah, the rendering part's gonna take me quite a bit of time. So that's probably a big bulk of today's um, time lapse. And then the other bulk will probably be me painting Yunjin. But I'm trying to my best to add different shadows. I'm trying to erase a lot of the lines that I don't need so that it's easier for me to clean up as usual. Um, but yeah, um, the reason why I'm doing this in paint side or just on the computer in general is because Usually when I'm tackling a larger background like this, it's easier for me to work in Paint Tool Sai. For Procreate, I kind of like flip-flop between like, do I do something more structured or do I just like, I, I feel like in Procreate, I tend to blur everything anyways. So it's like a cop-out, but I guess I kind of do that here a little bit later, but I'm going to take my time and basically flesh things out. I noticed that I did the folds of the lanterns incorrectly. This is why it's good to have references, but I was kind of struggling anyways, figuring how I wanted to do like the little folds and bends. I kind of, no, I think I do add some kind of shadows a little bit later anyways, but yeah, just indication of lines. Um, for wood texture, but I needed to add a lot of shadows afterwards because a lot of these things read kind of flat. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like I need to learn how to paint more objects again before tackling something like this because a lot of things read too flat and they, they read a little awkward <laughs> at times until I get things a little bit more fleshed out. And I think it's also because Yoonjin's not blocked in that my eye goes towards those weird looking lanterns. But I also think it's because I didn't add the light inside the lanterns quite yet. I did have a lot of fun kind of rendering the wood a little bit so we could add a little bit of texture and this little sauce thing. I don't know if Jade Parcels need like requires any sauce, but I decided to put like a little container because I always see these. Um, I was going to put, I think in the beginning in my sketch, I put like bottles, but that's like more like street food carts in like, I feel like Western countries probably, which I don't think is as common for like these kinds of food. They usually have those larger containers with like a ladle spoon thing and you can pour soy sauce and stuff onto your food or whatever sauce they have, like chili oil or something. So I had that instead. Um, and then I started fleshing out these little jade parcels, which I forgot to pull up a reference. So I drew them very odd. Um, I'm gonna pull up a reference soon. I think at this point I have a reference. So they, they resemble them a little bit more, but then I kind of go off course again and just started painting them very generally and they look kind of funny. They look, they look like a vegetable, just like a normal vegetable. They don't look like a, like, they don't look like a pouch that's like containing anything. Hopefully I know, like you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm like stuttering and like my brains, my brains is gone at this point. Um, but yeah, the container was fun to do. I think that was that was fun. It was a nice touch to add something on the the counter. But I was trying my best to add more wood texture because I have a tendency to make things look a little bit too smooth. But I know that's like very unsettling for something like that. Like it's for structures and stuff. If it's not like metal or like actually a smooth surface, like it should have some kind of texture. So yeah, I decided to add a layer of kind of like a transparent yellow over top the Tonghulu because I need it to look like it has some kind of glaze or um, coating on top of it, which in this case is the sugar. So sometimes when you see me click off of Paint Tool Sai, you'll see that the bars of Paint Tool Sai kind of goes like white as I'm clicking off. It's because I have um, Eagle open on my laptop screens because I have dual screens at the moment. So I have eagle in the back so that I can view it at all times because I don't want to stray too far from my initial idea or plan and I wanted to keep within the color range which I think I did an okay job. I think it helps that Yunjin kind of ties it all together because the background and the foreground are heavily separated I think in terms of the colors so the background's very blue and purple but the foreground's very much browns and oranges so I probably should have tried to tie them in a little bit together before rendering the crap out of it. But also you can also use like blend modes and layers to help fix them a bit if you need to. Mm, I know like this video is going to be actually quite long, but the reason why I decided to show you guys in time lapse instead of the usual kind of like choppy bit. Well, usually I guess I guess I don't 
I guess, I guess. I usually don't do the choppy footage where I'm splicing up real-time footage if I'm working on the computer, but I think it's more beneficial for you guys to see the full process anyways, instead of me doing like bite-sized chunks of footage. I think it's because also some people have the misconception that if I upload like a 30 minute video of me drawing, suddenly it's like I only took 30 minutes on the drawing, which also doesn't make sense to me. Um, like, especially when I'm drawing on the iPad and stuff, like minimum probably two hours. Um, if I'm doing a portrait, like a finished portrait, if I'm sketching, maybe it's like an hour or so, less than an hour, it depends on what I'm working on. But yeah, hopefully you guys know that this is like sped up. Uh, I don't know how much it is. I think because of, I'm using Camtasia by the way, and the way how they change the clip speed is different. Like they do it by percentages rather than by like, you know, like one times or two times or like four times. So mine's like by a thousand percent, <laughs> um, which I don't know how fast that is, but yeah, the same thing, this illustration did take quite a long time, but I was trying to take my time. Um, also because like if I have references and um, I'm trying to throw in detail, I'm trying to refer to it as much as I can. And once I was done with the background, I should have probably slowed this down at least. I didn't, but I'm going to explain it anyways. I decided, like, I had my background split into two different layers. So I had the entire background where it's like the blue and the purple. So it's like the sky, the water, the pier, and the mountains. And then I had the other layer for the background, which is kind of like the food stall, um, the pier or like the concrete stuff behind Yunjin. And then, you know, the other lantern stands that are like behind her. And because I had it separate into these two layers, I wasn't able to blur the background, which is like the blue and the smaller lanterns together. So what I did is in Clip Studio Paint, um, well, I saved it again. I opened it in Clip Studio Paint. I duplicated both of the layers and then I just blurred the entire thing. And then I decided to erase what I wanted to be in focus so that I could have some field of depth, like at least in the illustration, because I wanted, if Yunjin's in focus, then most likely the stuff in the front is in focus because she's closer to the front and a lot of the things in the back are kind of blurred. But because it's not like intensely blurred, um, I didn't want to blur the front as well. Because like if you think about it, if you're focusing on something that's like in the center, some stuff in the front's gonna be blurred and like a lot of the stuff in the back is gonna be blurred. But I decided just to keep it that it's just the back elements that are blurred. So hopefully that makes sense. I know some of the lines look a little bit fuzzy because I have them separated in such a weird way, but I'm hopefully gonna buff it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, while I was talking about all that, I needed to put in the colors for Yunjin. And the way how I like to approach this is that I like to establish the background colors first. I think it's also very important unless you know the background color isn't going to influence the piece at all. I think if you're doing just a flat color and the color range that you might change it to is very minimal, it's okay to do the background color maybe a little bit later if you already know what the color is going to be. But I think if you're planning a whole entire scene or there's like multiple different lighting and stuff, establish the background first and then put in the character. Unless the character is like for some reason like illuminating, then you might have to flip flop between the two. But yeah, you need to figure out what colors the figure is gonna be in the lighting situation of the background. So you can see that when I was working on Yunjin's skin in the first place, like I gave her more of a pinky cooler tone um, rather than the usual kind of like warmer orangey peachish tone that I would have probably given her if she was more in like just normal daylight. But I decided to give her the more pinkish cooler tone because she is in more of a darker cooler light. And you can always adjust this with the blend modes anyways. So if that's something you would like to do, you can. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna add blend modes. Did I add blend modes? I probably did. I very skipped over that part, so I actually don't remember because I'm rambling so much, but I'm pretty sure I did. So I added it closer to her right side, and then on the left side, I added an addition layer so that I could, or luminosity layer so I could add kind of like the warmer hue of the lantern onto her hair and just the entire left side. 
and then after that I merged my layers and I'm basically just painting on this one layer because this is easier for me to manage and I'm trying to keep things clean enough because I have her on top of everything else but whenever I merge my sketch and there's nothing behind it that's merged directly like underneath then the lines no longer become multiplied they become normal and because I'm usually using lighter colors to make things look soft they appear really like white looking so I have to make sure those edges are cleaned up really well and you can see some of them here for like her little blue braid thing her yeah like the rope braid you can see that there's a lot of orange lines that are appearing in there and that's because that's what I was using at the time I tried my best to darken them before I merged the layers but there were some that I missed I do like the movement of her hair and stuff. I think it looks really pretty. I did paint her hair a little bit more painterly um, because of that. Because I kind of left the sections a little bit differently and kind of transitioned them a little bit differently how I would usually probably paint them. But yeah, I had a lot of fun painting her. I think I love adding kind of like rim lighting or some kind of lighting to these kinds of pieces. It's always very fun to paint over top and play with the colors. Also, because it's like the night situation, like I said, I was using very dull and kind of darker gold colors, orange colors for like her gold pieces and only adding a little bit of pops of highlight here and there so that they don't read too flat. But yeah, that's why it's, I think it's important to always establish their background color if you can so that you can fit your character properly into the space because otherwise I probably would have painted Eugene to um, bright and vibrant and I probably would have had the light source in the wrong place um, But yeah, like I said, you can probably like kind of counter Balance that a little bit if you add blend modes afterwards and kind of like knock back colors But I think you have to do that a little bit more carefully Because I don't know maybe it's just me if I can establish the skin tone and the hair color at least properly um, it gives me a better idea of everything else. Like I knew I couldn't use super bright whites for Eugene's um, Like white elements on her clothing like the fluffy things the little balls on her head and stuff Because they shouldn't be bright white. If they're bright white then they kind of stand out too much and I don't know they'll look too too obviously like it doesn't fit and Yeah, because a lot of these are kind of pushed towards the cooler side and then closer to warmer colors when it hits towards the left. I do like how I painted her sleeve on the left. I guess it's her right arm technically, but it's on left on the image. It's just like the folds and stuff look really cool. I think that's another reason why I like painting in Paint to Sai. Like Procreate, I paint very much more, I feel like smoother, like transition of colors a lot smoother, but like in Paint to Sai, I think I paint a little bit more painterly. Um, just because of the brush that I have and I think it's kind of fun because it kind of gives you that chunky um, color shift almost in some of the areas. I'm doing some last few things so I'm adding a screen over top of some elements of her hair and some of the, the background elements just to push them back a little bit because I don't want them to stand out and then I'm adding a few more lanterns. Like I said I'm buffing out the edges of these so they don't look too weird. Once again, adding more lanterns, I'm going to add a little stream of like little dust or light kind of peering through. I also added steam to the food and I think that's about it for today's drawing session. Like I said, if you guys are interested in checking out Eagle, then definitely check out either the pinned comment or the description down below. And yeah, thank you again to Eagle for sponsoring today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time with another video. Bye!